I'm Tiny, I'm a rapper, and creativity is everything to me. Art has allowed me to share my story with the world and has helped me understand all my different sides. And this is Extraordinary Portraits, where I bring people with inspiring stories. And it completely turned my life around. I felt like a completely different person. It was the first time that I felt comfortable enough to speak about who I am. And teamed them up with some of the most talented artists in the UK. Man, that's cool, do that to create a series of one-off portraits that reflects modern-day Britain in all its glory. Yes! She's an absolute boss. Portraits have always shown us the heroes of history and who has the power or the money to end up on a gallery wall. I want to find the new heroes to hang on our walls. This is looking really good. I'm excited to introduce my sitters to the artists I've chosen to create their extraordinary portraits. Oh my goodness me! Wow! Made me get a bit emotional. <laughs> Thank you. My heart beats is quite fast. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. I know in music, if you get the right people together, the collaboration can be magic. Like music, portraits have the power to evoke emotion, tell a story, and that's what I'm really excited about, bringing together world-class artists with incredible, everyday people that have really inspiring stories. Like Harriet, who has come from the Shetland Isles to meet the artist who will paint her portrait. Cancer survivor Harriet raised over £100,000 to help buy an MRI scanner for the island's only hospital by knitting and selling hats. I think it's a bit of a privilege, really, because it's not every day you'll get the chance to get your portrait done, is it? I'm meeting Stuart Pearson Wright, an amazingly talented, award-winning artist. At the age of 25, his painting of the late John Hurt was acquired by the National Portrait Gallery, and he's been called one of the most gifted portrait artists of his generation. Stuart has a very distinctive style. He's known for his figurative paintings and irreverent, sometimes humorous tone. How are you, Stuart? How have you been? been? It's been good, thanks, yeah. Good, man. I like the whole, you know, it's working. I like, I like your whole Thank you. thing as well. I like the zebras and the giraffes. Got to do your bit, haven't exactly, you? Exactly, exactly. It's working, man. Feel free <laughs> to have a seat. Where did you travel from today, Stuart? The Badlands of Suffolk. And then in Suffolk, what's your setup like? I've got a studio that's joined to my house. That's pretty cool. And it's a 17th century house. Nice. And it's, it's set within the grounds of an old castle, in fact. Uh, oh, wow. But it's all derelict. It's uninhabitable, except by pigeons. Why did you decide to live there and work there? <laughs> it seemed like uh, a suitably insane choice. Yeah. So when it comes to your portraits, because mm. it's quite surreal sometimes, it's quite mm. hyper-real, yeah. what's your approach? To me, when I think of formal portraits, I think of sort of dusty war heroes and yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And that's not really the kind of thing that I do. The, the paintings are more kind of narrative pictures. And how do you go about finding the narrative for each bit of work? I feel that faces tell their own stories. Definitely. And I like to try and look for the sort of common humanity. One of the ways I've, I've done that in the past is, is just to paint someone's face. There's a portrait I did of John Hurt. What I did is I, I didn't paint any of his clothes or, I mean, he wasn't naked. Not that I don't paint people naked. But the idea was just to sort of get rid of the trappings of fame or position. Yeah, kind of taking out the ego from the person yeah, and almost so. stripping it down to the rawest elements while always trying to make sure that there's a narrative. Yeah, it, the thing is, if I, if I was to paint you, mm. I mean, that would be quite tricky mm -hmm. because you're a man who loves fashion and loves dressing mm -hmm. well, and it would almost seem a shame to, you know, just paint a face yeah. and leave all that behind. So yeah. maybe I'd have to do two approaches and paint you twice. Well, at least you didn't say anything about naked, so I was ha <laughs> I'm happy, at least I get to keep my clothes on. Do you have any expectations about your sitar? No, not really. Um, it's interesting. I once went to paint quite a famous cricket player. He said to me, 
So are you a big fan of cricket? And I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I don't know anything about it. Yeah. And he said, well, why did they send you to paint me? I actually think that's a real advantage. Because if I was a huge fan of yours, I'd, I'd come to you with a kind of set of preconceptions. Yeah. And... Eager to please. Yeah, exactly. But that's why I think it's really um, exciting that, you know, whatever character the sitter mm. has, you're going to get to spend some time with them and get to understand them on a deeper level. And yep. it's going to be really interesting to see what you can find between yourself mm. and the sitter. Point of connection. So, Stuart, you ready to meet your sitter? I am ready to meet them. All right, cool. I'm going to go get them now. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I'm really, really good. So, have you ever had your portrait done before? No, I haven't. I'm really quite excited about this. Well, you deserve one. <laughs> it's incredible what you've done. Well, I don't know about that. Definitely. All the money that you raised, were you surprised at how people reacted? I was very humbled. But if you can reach out to the knitting community, then nobody quite liked them. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> and they... There's a whole gang of you. I know. Um, <laughs> Harriet, are you ready to meet the artist oh, yes. that will be doing your portrait? Surely. Surely. Okay, cool. Let's do it. After you. Okay. I love her. It's like mine. Stuart, Harriet, Harriet. Hi. Hello. Hello. Nice to meet you. And you. This is all very exciting, isn't it? Isn't it, Justin? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Harriet, I love you. Oh. Have a seat. Yeah. Stuart, I really, really wanted you to meet because I feel like she's the most incredible woman. She spearheaded a very impressive effort to raise money for the Gilbert Bain Hospital, which is the only hospital in Shetland, right? That's right, yeah. It was a drive that was on. We were needing an MRI scanner. Oh, right. Because we didn't have one. And if they needed an MRI scan, mm -hmm. then they would either have to go on the boat or go on the plane to get to Aberdeen. Right. It could be a 12, maybe 14-hour journey on the ferry. Wow. For some people that maybe were really not very well, mm -hmm. it could be a very arduous, frightening journey. Yes. It seems like you've always had quite an affinity to the hospital, right? My youngest daughter, Heather, she's a nurse. And then I had reason to have to go and have a MRI scan mm -hmm. once every three months for two years. Right. And I always chose to go on the boat because flights could right. get cancelled for the hospital. The target was 1.65 million pounds. That target has been reached. It's just been a huge community effort. Yeah. Everybody throughout Shetland has done various different things. Mm -hmm. Their fuck had their heads shaved, gone on walks, lots of things I couldn't do. But one thing I can do is knit. Right. <laughs> As you can see. <laughs> we set up this group at MRI Markers. Mm -hmm. And Marker is just like maybe a knitter. You're, you're marking things. People would order the hats and it went on Twitter, it went everywhere. It really just took off. So where, where were you actually selling the well, products got, you were making? We got orders for all around the world now. I think it's all really incredible what, what you've done. Is, is it rude for me to ask how much money you raised? Well, it was 103,000. Amazing. £466.87. <laughs> <laughs> to the penny. Congratulations. <laughs> So Shetland obviously has this uh, reputation for, for knitwear. I mean, I love your, uh, your cardigan, it's beautiful. Well, this cardigan is actually 40 years old. Is it? Uh-huh. Wow. It belonged to my mum. My mum was um, very passionate about her heritage and her knitting and Shetland and everything else, and she did a lot of fundraising. Depending on the outcome of this portrait, if you like it, do you think that Stuart and I could maybe get one of these famous Shetland jumpers. I don't know. You don't <laughs> have know? To think about it and see. Oh, <laughs> let's wait and see. OK, oh, the pressure. The pressure's on. <laughs> Harriet, you're the first person I've met from Shetland. So what does Shetland mean to you then? Well, Shetland is just my home. I'm just really, really, really proud to be a Shetlander. It's a little bit of magic wherever you go in Shetland. I've always wanted to go. You would love it. Would We'd I? absolutely love it. I mean, we have to sort of work out how I'm going to paint your portrait, and I suppose right. it's only natural to head a long way north. You'd be very, very, very welcome. Oh, thanks. What are you thinking in regards to your portrait? Do you have a certain image in your head of what you feel like it's going to look like? Um, I wouldn't want it to be wacky. <laughs> <laughs> wacky? Yeah, I wouldn't want it to be... <laughs> what should I avoid? <laughs> Just sort of... <laughs> I, mean, <it's> just... <laughs> I think what I would 
like would be maybe something that my grandchildren would sort of be very pleased about. Mm -hmm. Because um, it would be nice for them to be able to say, my granny got a portrait done. Stuart is your man. <laughs> That's my thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let the process begin. Thanks very much. Thank you very, very much. All right, okay. safe trip, guys. I'm really, really looking forward to Stuart coming up to Shetland. It'd be nice to show off. We're absolutely beautiful islands. If the story and the portrait and everything could inspire somebody else to maybe do something, then that would be, that would be brilliant. I'm slightly worried that she's so cheerful. Uh, <laughs> if anything, my portraits tend to pick up on people's um, sadness. So whenever I meet someone who's very cheerful that I have to paint, I, I panic slightly. But I'm sure it will be fine. So Stuart and Harriet. Stuart clearly loves to draw faces, ones that tell a story. Not only this, he's going to be in Shetland, he's going to be in a new environment, and hopefully he's going to get some extra inspiration out there that could influence the portrait somehow. So let's see what happens. So this is my studio. We've got a selection of goodies here. Drawings and sketches, my father-in-law, my son, that's me there in profile. Stuart likes to play with perspective and space around the figures in his paintings to create original and surprisingly bold images. This is an old beard that's being kept for an unknown purpose. I might incorporate that in painting at some point. Those uh, beautiful colours at the top are pigments and I just put those up there to give people the impression that I make my own paints when actually I just buy them from the shop. I must admit, I'm mainly interested in drawing quite decrepit looking elderly men. Perhaps I'm sort of projecting onto them in some way. These kind of lived in faces, and I have in the past sort of stopped people on buses to ask if I can draw them. And that's met with mixed results. It has borne fruit sometimes. So we're on the night ferry, come from Aberdeen, sailing across the North Sea. I view coming here as a kind of reconnaissance mission to sort of get the information that I need. And I'm excited to see all the, all the wool. <laughs> Harriet lives with husband Jim in the island's main town, Lerwick. You made it. Nice to see you again. And you, and you. You well? Yeah, I'm fine, and you? Yeah, very well, right. thanks. Well, we're going to have a cup of tea, mate. That'd be lovely. Yeah. Thank you very much. In you come. I've actually got something for you. Have you? I have. Oh, great. It's very kind of you. Well, I thought if you were going to be good enough to do oh, my wow. portrait, the least I could do was make you a scarf. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Look at that. That's beautiful. Well, I hope you like it. Wow. That's about as authentic a Shetland scarf as you can find anywhere. Well, I just have to I change try... it now. Well, <laughs> you might find it pretty but itchy to begin with, I don't know, but... No, I, I love wool, and I do wear a scarf all the time. I hate do you? Having a, oh, I can't stand having a cold neck. There you go. Sometimes I walk around the house in my underpants and a scarf. <laughs> just, just keeping the important bits warm. Stuart wastes no time in meeting Harriet's knitting group, who were at the heart of her fundraising campaign. So, have you ever done any knitting before? Uh, no. Would no. you like me to teach you how to knit? Yes, I'd love you to. Hello. This is my friend Stuart. He's an artist and he's actually going to paint my portrait. She's going to have all her clothes on. <laughs> Just in case any of you were concerned. <laughs> this is my granddaughter, Laura. And Laura has been helping Granny with the knitting group right from the very start. And then, this is Laura's mum, Heather. Hello, Heather. Hello. And you're making a Harriet hat as well, I, I see? Yeah. So, so I take my sometimes needles. the best way to learn is to watch. So what's that? That's my knitting belt. OK. My old Granny, mm -hmm. they used to knit as they walked. So she'd be knitting as she was walking along? So she would be knitting as she was walking along because every minute was precious. Wow. That was maybe when the knitting belt was kind of thought about. 
Yeah. And it helps to keep your tension, right? So you take your needle and you go in, over, through, and off. My granddad used to say, in or through and off. In or through and off. <laughs> Let's have a go with this. <laughs> so, in. in, through there. Through there. Over. No, the other way. This way? Yeah, between the two wires. Between the two. Through and off. And then I pull that bit off. Oh, yeah. Right, there you go. Oh, God, that's terrifying. <laughs> Things like this make my brain hurt slightly. <laughs> and I'm watching you in action. There's a lot of muscle memory here, I sense. Like, your fingers know what to do, and you could do that in your sleep. I'm wondering if any of you have got any suggestions about how I should depict Granny Mum in her in her portrait. Definitely, Definitely smiling, because she's always smiling. smiling. Yeah. And she's always knitting. Don't draw her false teeth, Paul. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think she should be wearing? I think she should be wearing this cardigan, because this is dyed to my clothing that means the most to her. Yeah. Well, that's the only thing I've seen you wearing. I assume that you never oh, take it off. <laughs> the irony is that if you look at any of my portraits, people are never smiling, mm -hmm. and I never paint patterns. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my confession. So I'm, I'm really starting to feel quite stressed. Well, I finished my uh, my my piece well, anyway. Not, yeah, no. <laughs> it took a bit longer than I'd hoped, but um, is my stitching okay? Oh, Can you just check it over? It's absolutely. So that was really quite good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Have you? <laughs> <laughs> I need to get this cardigan. <laughs> I've got to do your mum proud. She would just be so... You have no idea. <laughs> I think I've probably got all I need. Okay. That's a wrap, as they say in the business. <laughs> What an experience, thank honestly. Thank you so much. Well, thank you. Oh, really? Thanks for sitting so patiently. Oh. With Harriet, she's full of laughter and joy. That, you know, that can be a bit contagious. She's a great person to spend time with and be around. There are not very many folk hate that done in your sitting room, are they? <laughs> not many folk hate it done at all. <laughs> I just feel so privileged, honoured. I don't know what the right words are. So, so, so lucky. But I just cannot wait to see the final result. I got the drawing done and I've taken lots of photographs. I've really just got to get back to my studio and think through all the things I've seen and heard and uh, formulate a plan and start painting. After his trip, Stuart gets to work capturing Harriet in the only way he knows. It's strange. I'm trying to just get her nose right. I'm trying to get her expression and her warmth. I'm trying to make it look like her, but I'm trying to avoid it looking like her in a photographic way, which is ironic, because I'm using photographs to paint from. So I'm trying to create some other kind of likeness, which is subjective, I suppose that's what I'm trying to say. I don't often paint people smiling, but it was impossible not to paint Harriet smiling. It's just, it's quite hard to paint someone smiling and not make it look like a kind of rigor mortis grin. So I'm hoping to avoid that. I'm really going to be leaving my comfort zone in trying to depict these sort of Shetland knitting patterns. I can't say I'm looking forward to that part of it. I did enjoy painting her nose. You know, it's a, it's a good nose. It is going to be challenging to get it done on time, but I, I do love the moment, actually, of presenting a painting to someone, assuming that they, they like it. Eight weeks after meeting Stuart, Harriet is back to see her portrait for the first time. How you doing, Stuart? You right? Tiny. Good to see you, man. Yeah. How's it going? Really good. Where, where's the cover? Well, it's still wet. It's still wet. <laughs> yeah. I had to bring it up like this on the train. You're the first artist that's done that, you know. I always knew you were a bit peculiar. Come on, Stuart, let's go. <laughs> Harriet has brought her husband, Jim, son, Billy, daughter, Heather, and grandkids, Maycomb and Laura, for the big reveal. So, Stuart, how did you find the inspiration for this portrait? You went up to the Shetland Isles, right? It's a beautiful place. I've got to go back. Is it? No, I want to go one day. Yeah, well, we could go together. We could go hiking across that the island. That sounds very, very fun. And how much did that experience influence your portrait? Do you feel like it was important to go up there? For me, it's kind of a luxury to get that kind of background story to a portrait. The main quality of Harriet that spoke to me was her optimism. You know, she's just got this boundless, go-get-them outlook, and that's what inspired me, and I hope, I hope I've conveyed some sense of that. Wicked, man. Let's bring him in. This is exciting, isn't it? Hello. Nice to see you again. Hi, and hello. You. Hello. How are you doing? Who are you here with today? Would you like I'm to introduce everyone? By... Well, this is my hobby. Hello. Jim, at the back. How are you doing, Jim? And then this is Billy. Hi. Billy, was. How are you doing, Billy? That's with Dr. Heather. And this is grandson, Maycom. How you doing, Maycom? You right? And this yeah, is right. Laura. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so how much time did you guys spend in Shetland together? Oh, no long enough. What did you show Stuart? Well, you came to Wermacher's night. Okay? Yeah. And tried to teach him to knit. How was that? <laughs> I, I like the emphasis on tried. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't do too bad. Harry, what are you hoping to see once the portrait is revealed? I'm hoping it'll be quite a true likeness of whatever Stuart sees me as being. Jim, have you got any expectations? I'm, I'm just hoping not abstract, <laughs> you know? <so laughs> life, life Trying life to work and... it out. Where, where is yeah. she? Where is she? <laughs> so yeah. no pressure then. <laughs> <laughs> Harriet, are you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Stuart, go okay. for it, bro. Here we are. 
three, two, one. Oh! Wow! <laughs> that is really lovely. I kind of believe the detail that you've got into all that. Gosh! <laughs> It's really captured the essence of who she is. Smiling, knitting, you can see her personality coming through the painting. Stuart said when he was up in Shetland that he'd never done a, a smiling person before. <laughs> but I think he's done such a, such a wonderful job and can stay in my heart anyway. And I thank you very much, Stuart. You're very welcome. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Laura? Fabulous. <laughs> Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> Fabulous. Can I use that quote? Is that OK? <laughs> <laughs>helping people. So Stuart, hearing Harriet and her family, how does it make you feel? Relieved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I need a, a little tot of Shetland whiskey now, just to, <laughs> good stuff. Just to calm my nerves. No, it's, oh, I'm, I'm delighted. And um, I have some exciting news. The painting is going to the Shetland Museum. My goodness me. Yep, and they're very excited to have the painting of you in their collection so that they can tell your story. You'll grace the walls of the Shetland Museum for <laughs> time immemorial. Oh. oh, that is just amazing. I don't think that that's ever happened to anybody from home before. I suppose another aspect to it is that this would never have happened if I hadn't had all the help worldwide for everybody, mm -hmm. knitters and everything all around the world. Now the painting will be able to tell that story for generations to That's inspire right. future Maccas. That's right. Oh, my mum especially, she would have been so proud of this. Oh. <laughs> so guys, Stuart and I will leave you to it so that you can step in and take a closer look. Oh, right, let's go and have a look, will we? Yeah. Portraits are powerful. The detail on that. They have the ability to tell us about a person, a time, and a place. But fancy you and getting home in the museum. Mm. This portrait in particular told us a story of a humble lady from Shetland who was able to do something incredible for her community. <laughs> Stuart's portrait tells a story of Harriet, but it's also about her heritage and her family, past and present. What always surprises me about portraits is how many things one picture can say. 